All righty. I'm going to go ahead and get started here just because, like I said, there's a lot to cover. So my name is Kaylin Kelly. I am the Senior Director of Customer Enablement on the ImageQuicks and PhotoLink side. Today, what we're going to be going over is flow. And what I get asked a lot with flow or what people I think don't realize necessarily with flow is flow does a lot. There's a lot of different ways you can use flow. We actually have four different versions of flow and you can actually use all four of them in your studio all at the same time, essentially. So the four main or the four ways that it can be used is going to be flow ID. Now flow ID is meant to be used for a school. If any of you guys have been customers with us in the past, it's similar to like an old SIS program. Um, also very similar to Plick Go, which is our cloud-based app. Flow ID is nice though, because you can install it right on the school's computer and it, it's essentially a limited version of Flow. I'm gonna go through and show you guys exactly what it looks like here in just a little bit once we touch on each one of these. But this Flow ID is meant to be given to the schools so that they can use Flow with your images and data you use to capture and print their own ID cards or certificates, add student records for kids who maybe weren't there, lost their ID card, something along those lines. So it's a real basic version of Flow. You'll hear it called Flow ID or Flow Basic. That's essentially what it is. It just does ID cards, simplified version of Flow. The second way that Flow is used, which is the most commonly used version of Flow or what people think of Flow um, when they hear it, the name Flow, is gonna be Flow as a capture station. So we have lots and lots of different ways to capture into Flow and lots of different tools that are in there. So you don't necessarily have to use it in a tethered workflow. However, it is designed to be very smooth to make it as automated and hands-free as possible when you are tethered. Um, you can also import images with metadata. You can also manually assign images and data together, um, as well as import images and data if you have a data file that has maybe image names in it, maybe coming from some third-party program or software, or your team's physically typing in JPEG names. So there's lots of different ways you can use Flow for capture. Of course, when it's in a capture station state, of course, you get all the extra abilities to do cropping, color correction, green screen knockout, all the ability to upload to Plick and connect to the Blueprint shopping cart and import those orders back in. There's so many features we can do in there. I'll try to touch on as many as I can in the short time that we have. Um, but I think a lot of people know about Flow as a capture station. The next version is going to be the network flow. Now this is flow, think of flow more than just a capture program when you're thinking of network flow. These are true flow stations that are going to be kept in the studio and they're used as production machines. So these production machines are going to be the ones bringing in all the images and data from your capture stations, your flow capture stations, potentially doesn't have to be, but your flow capture stations. And it's essentially pushing all of those projects out to all of your other workstations in the building. So I may be working on a project and Felicia can also open up that project on her station and essentially see what I'm doing in there. She can do package entry while I'm cropping that same job. Or we're both doing package entry. Do we just split up the order forms or um, we're doing that in there? So that's a really cool way to be able to push your jobs. A lot of people who have used flow in a capture station, when it's an individual capture station, the only way to get a project from one machine to another is doing an export and then opening the other machine and importing it in. So the network flow station really eliminates this and gives us real time updates, essentially, as you're going through and using the program. There's also the ability to rip out of flow or flow with ripping capabilities. This is also something that I don't think a lot of people realize is inside of flow, but flow can physically rip out all your print units, meaning it'll render out those eight wallets that you have, or the two five by sevens, or all your different print units. Also, while it's ripping these out, of course, it can rip them in whatever sort order that you need. It can also separate them into different types of folders based off of the type of product that it is. If it needs to print in a different type of printer or go through a different department in your studio, you can have it split it up that these are the print unit and these are sublimation items, or you could even do more uh, granular. We could say these are all the print units, these are the water bottles, these are the magnets, these are the buttons. You can have it all get separated so each department can grab each one of those folders and process them as needed. So those are kind of the four ways that you can use Flow. What I'd like to do is really kind of show you guys how these look and feel differently 
um, when you're in the flow station. I do want to just clarify that these can be used all within one studio. You can give flow ID to the school because you captured in flow. You brought that capture flow station into your network environment and you're ripping those units out yourself if you're vertical. It can also go directly to your lab as well. So the first version of flow I'm going to pull up, this is going to be flow ID or flow basic. You'll notice it's still all my same flow projects in here it has the same feel. What you'll see though is we don't have as many options up here at the top. That's because it's flow ID or flow basic. It's meant to be simple, easy for the schools to use. This is again school facing application so that they can open up their project and really they're limited to being able to design layouts and print layouts as well as add subjects, edit data. They wouldn't ever need to do anything with packages. So there's nothing related to packages in here or reporting or anything along those lines. We're trying to keep it real simple. We also have the ability in here and actually within all the flow stations, all the different versions um, to take a picture in here. And you can actually have this set up to use your webcam. So I can have this pull from my webcam here and I can take a picture excuse me, that's not on. <laughs> but you can take the picture right through there, which makes it easy for the school, as well as this hot folder still works like a regular hot folder. So you can go ahead and add any images that you need right into that hot folder. They're going to appear so that the school can still add their records, add the images, and then print those ID cards. So this is going to be the flow basic or flow ID. This truly is the most simplified version of flow. As we go up through each one of these tiers of flow, you're never losing features. You're always just adding features on. So keep in mind, we're not losing any features. The feel of this is just going to keep enhancing as we go up in tiers in these different versions of flow. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to close out of this flow ID. And I'm just going to go ahead and open this up in the capture version. I'm going to try not to spend too much time on the capture side of things just for the sake that I want to make sure that um, we hit our time limits here. So this is going to be opening flow in a capture state. This is the most commonly used version of flow. This is also the same flow version you would be getting if you were getting flow from a lab or if you are sending orders to a lab. This is giving you tons of added features here from that flow ID. Like I mentioned before, it's going to be doing your image and data assignment in so many different ways to capture. We're also going to have the ability to go in and crop images, do color correction, green screen knockout within the program. You can also export that out for a third party knockout if you'd like. Um, all that order entry and then of course the ability to upload directly to PLIC. So you'll notice it has a very similar feel here. I just have way more options up here at the top. So as I go and open these projects again, I'm going to, we have all those features in here. I'm going to try to touch on some of the newer features that are inside of flow just to keep this high level and to keep this moving. Um, but some of the really cool new ones kind of like a COVID response that we've done here is we have this new find subjects. And this find subjects it's an easy way it can actually be touch screen if you have a touch screen laptop or tablet Microsoft surface something like that. So you can touch screen to search for subjects while you're capturing. Make sure that it's only showing the unphotographed subjects. This is a really cool feature that's added in here. We've also added the ability to actually allow this to be a voice search as well. If you are in a quiet enough area when you're capturing to be able to do that voice search. Another cool feature that we've added in that's newer this year for anyone who um, has, didn't get to see some of the new things that we've done is we've added in color correction and exposure in here in the crop or adjust images screen. So you have ability to make adjustments to your RGB your red, green, and blue right here. Anyone who's familiar with any of our old applications like Image Match, this is going to be the equivalent to the color correction that's in Image Match, just easier to use. So it's the same value. So if you in Image Match always added two to the, the red in there, you're always going to be able to, that's going to match essentially. So that's our red, green, blue. We also have the contrast, density, and sharpness down here. When you're going through and using these, you can still go ahead and apply these to just an individual image. You also, when you hit apply all, have the ability to choose that you're applying the crop to everyone or just the color settings. So this is a really cool new feature in here that's built in just to help enhance what we're doing here. So 
now that we've gone through and kind of hit a little bit on this, again, I can't stress enough that there's so many ways to capture, so many ways to do order entry, but this is flow as like a capture station, working with your lab. There's still a lot of production stuff that you can do in here with designing your own layouts that you maybe tie to your catalog to send to the lab. Um, but this is gonna be kind of flow in a capture station. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and open up flow do network flow next. And I'm going to go ahead and just answer this question before anybody asks it. I cannot get you this version of flow where you can just switch to all of these versions in one time. Uh, not typically designed for something like that. Um, but for demoing purposes, it works great. So this next flow that I'm going to be opening up is actually going to be the network flow. So this is a little tricky for me to show you as I'm not obviously networked into a bunch of different studio um, workstations right now. I'm set up on just my workstation. This is an example though of what that flow server looks like. Essentially what this flow server does is it's sitting here watching all of your jobs. I like to think of it as the owner or the master of all these projects that you have. It's always gonna have the latest version of your project. While all the other workstations when they go to open a job, they're pulling it from this server machine. As they make changes to their project or the project they're working on, those changes come back into this queue that you see listed here, get synced and then pushed back out to the workstations. So you'll notice that this server machine obviously has a different feel here. There's also this on and off switch up here at the top. When the switch is turned off, it's not syncing any of your projects that are in this network environment. You're essentially saying, turn that off and let's treat this like a regular flow station. In this environment, when you're using a network flow, you're typically gonna have a dedicated machine that's gonna be this flow network. And you're typically just gonna leave this on so that it's scanning and updating all your jobs so all your workstation computers can work and be up to date, seeing all the latest and greatest changes or packages, cropping, color correction you've done. This is gonna be kind of the high level. Again, all of these different versions of flow can all work within your studio. Essentially, you're using the same program to achieve all these different things, and you'll have to relearn something new to give the school their ID software or to have the production machines or to rip out your own units if you're printing. I will say that network flow is not necessarily limited to vertical studios. This is great for large studios that have massive amount of production machines going and working on these projects. Um, I've also had some people who use this and they only have one or two workstations just for the ease of not having to do the export import when you're using a typical flow capture station. So this is gonna be the network flow or flow server. You'll hear it called kind of both. They're interchangeable, just like flow ID and flow basic. Um, typically your server machine or this network flow machine is gonna be the master machine. It's like this on purpose so that it can distribute these catalogs to all of the other workstations. It's essentially marking and watching these catalogs. And whenever you make a change to any of these catalogs, it's pushing those out to the workstations. I will clarify that in this network environment, this is truly there's a network machine and workstations. Those are gonna be different than your capture machines. Machines that are leaving the building and going and capturing Obviously it can't be plugged into your network. So they're not gonna be plugged into that. That's a different type of flow station and it's used differently in this workflow. Same application though. So when you come back to do production you don't have to relearn a production program. It's all still flow essentially. So again, flow server, typically you're gonna be leaving this on. It's going through and updating all those projects. Another huge benefit that comes with flow server is when you go out and capture all of your uh, schools, maybe you have 11 cameras out in one day. All of those cameras typically are gonna be doing a full project export or exporting the project. In the past, what people would have to do is come back to Flow, they'd import each one of those projects one at a time. Well, in this network Flow environment, there's essentially a projects hot folder where you can just dump all of those full project exports right into that folder make sure the switch is turned on and it's just gonna sync and pump through all of these PAF files or full project exports and get them plugged into this network environment so everyone can start working on them. 
There's some key things that happen when you're working on these. Whereas if the server is in the middle of updating a project, it's going to let you know on the workstation. If you go to open up that project, it's going to say, hey, the server is still syncing this. Are you sure you want to open? When you open it, it's obviously not going to be the latest and greatest because the server is still syncing it. So there's some different things that are going to change a little bit in the workflow, but they're, they're enhancements to make sure that you're using the program in the most efficient way that you possibly can. Fourth way that we can use flow, I'll just close this again and reopen, is going to be flow with ripping. So this is great if you are a vertical studio, large or small, we have people of all, or studios of all sizes using flow with this ripping capability. Of course, excuse me, let me fix that real quick. Um, but essentially what this does is you actually get to use the layout builder tool to build all of your units out. So that's something that's different. People have used um, PhotoLink software in the past, have been familiar with using uh, PUD files or package unit definitions. Inside of Flow, we're kind of ditching that idea when we're doing this flow ripping and we're really just building out our layouts. Essentially very similar to the my design inside of Blueprint. You're building whatever it is that you're wanting to create. It doesn't have to be built around this this whole package configuration. So I'll get this open here. Here we go. So as we're building those layouts, I happen to already have some built inside of Flow. I'll pull those up for you. Um, you're gonna get a couple enhancements here. First off, the layout builder inside of Flow is way easier to use than anybody who's used a PUD in the past. Um, but it's very simple to get those set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my project here again. You'll see that it looks very similar to just a regular flow station. If this was a flow workstation in the network environment, you would also still have this ripping ability if you had the flow with ripping capabilities. So again, in our layout builder here, um, we do have the ability to have the layouts kind of broken down into different subfolders. So I have my print units in here, and as you'll see, I have all my different sheets built out. I have my eight wallets. Turn this on and we can get an example. These are my eight wallets. I have my two five by sevens, and they're gonna be sitting in here. I've really built all my units out in here. This is another great tool to use if you are working with the blueprint cart and potentially printing your own work, you're wanting to bring nicknames down that you're collecting. Um, or maybe you're trying to add a name and year at the bottom or some sort of extra enhancement on there, um, you can do that. So you go through and build all your units here. The next part of this is you're actually going to be using these units and associate them to your actual catalog. So if I go to my catalog tab here, I have my underclass 2021. And in here, I still have all my packages set up as usual. I'm just mapping which layout I actually want it to print. You'll also see that there's a rip folder option. So I'm saying this is an 8 by 10. I can also have these rip folders. These rip folders, I've narrowed it down to water bottles and keychains, but this is completely customizable to you and you can have as many different subfolders as you need. This is that portion that I was explaining where if you are vertical or ripping some of your units yourself, you can have these render out into these different subfolders. So whatever department needs to pick up and make all the water bottles, they're going to have all the rendered layouts that we've built, your water bottle layout design, so that they can take it over to that department and make sure that that gets processed properly. So you can set a different rip folder for each one of these units. Of course, you have your regular quantity, but it's really just coming in here and choosing your layout that you want to print for this unit. Whatever layout that you select here, I will just clarify and let you guys know that is going to be what displays on this order entry screen. So again, not so much any of those units that are sitting there. It's going to be pulling from what those layout names are. Now, as I go ahead and add a package to a record here, you do all your package entry as normal. You can still absolutely import all your blueprint orders into flow if that's your workflow. Um, but you're going to come in here and make sure all your packages are in here. The real difference here is when you go to process these orders, you're still hitting that shopping cart like you would if you were using a flow capture station or flow network sending to your lab, but we have a rip orders tab available now. 
This is going to look very similar to that submit order screen, except that it's actually ripping all of those units out into those organized subfolders and creating that special sort that you need. You're still going to have all your ability to come in here and do new orders, all orders, or past orders based off of dates and when you render them, or just the web orders, manual orders, specific filters. Um, I'm going to go ahead and rip just this one order here, just so for time's sake, but I will give you guys an example. The other thing that's enabled in here is being able to find the DPI. I know there's lots of different printers that require specific DPI, like it needs to be 321 or maybe just 300. So you get to define that DPI to make sure it's going to land properly um, for your printer. I'll go ahead and render this out. You still have the ability to choose your sort order here, just like with any of these versions of Flow, except for Flow Basic. Um, this is always going to default. You have two sorts, and then it defaults to last name, first name after that. So essentially, you have your two sorts and then alpha order after that. So I can say it's grade and teacher get that ripping down there in the bottom. We also have our different RIP reports. This is essentially a good way to get a report out that of all the subjects that were ripped and a good way to get a summary of how many were ripped. So I have X amount of package A's or I have um, a detailed subject report. So we have a couple different ways that we can get these reports out of here. Of course, this flow version also still has the ability to upload to PLIC. So if you are vertical, you can use your PLIC Go to generate all your yearbook and admin exports. You can still use elements to generate any composites or specialty service items like mug books or Hume stickers or anything like that. So that's all still gonna connect. And of course, that also means you can publish that job to Blueprint to do your online sales. Again, as those orders come in through Blueprint, they can be brought right back down into flow and then ripped out of here. There's also another actually workflow for Flow that can work with network flow. Um, if you're not ripping the unit yourself, we have another application called Plick Labs. Um, typically that's a lab application, but I've seen it happen or be set up in house for vertical studios. It's basically a way for them to have a separate application, Plick Labs, that's receiving all of these flow orders and they can process them as needed. So if we know that this job all of a sudden took priority because the principal called screaming bloody murder, we can go ahead and process that job before. So now what we're going to end up with, now that this is done ripping, is I'm going to go ahead and pull up just an example of what this looks like. So you're always going to end up with a rip folder with your RIP number. This is also a number that you can reference when you go to print a previous order that you've already ripped. This number is going to match. It's going to give you the date and time so you can really narrow down. Yep, those are the orders I'm trying to find or reprint. Now, I only printed actual print units. If I had put anything in the water bottle or keychains, those folders would be here, these subfolders. Of course, you can rip this to a network location so everyone can access it. But inside of here, these are going to be all my print units. From here, I can go ahead and we're still using RIP links in this workflow, but I just launched RIP links and we would just do a print and process rendered images here. There's no real need for that PUD or configuration in this workflow. So that was a lot of information, a lot of different ways to use flow. I wanna make sure we have a little bit of time for questions here, as I know I covered a lot. Um, if anybody has any questions, go ahead and use that Q&A down there at the bottom. I see that I do have one here. Uh, can Flow run on an Android tablet? Ideally, we want to be able to have like a Windows operating system on the tablet. So like a Microsoft Surface, those work really well. I don't think a plain Android tablet will work as it's not the same interface as a Windows type platform. But good question, Penny. Um, if anyone else has any other questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. Um, so I see a, a question coming in. Um, it, sees that, it seems that Flow is changing. So Flow is definitely an application that we're still going to be working on. Flow is not going to be going away anytime soon. We're obviously adding enhancements to it. Um, it is changing, and there's always enhancements coming in and being added. We're always trying to give you guys more and uh, make things easier for you guys. We're also trying to give different types of workflow solutions. So even though I mentioned all of these can be used in one studio, also just one of these workflows can be used in your studio. You don't have to use all of them. You have 
choices. And that's what we're trying to give you guys is not narrow you down into everyone must walk down the same path. You have a couple different options to choose what's going to work best for you and your studio and the way that you run your business.